Hi guys, welcome back to In Case of Econ Struggles. If you're finding these videos helpful, make sure to like and subscribe. Today we've got another micro struggle for you. We're gonna revisit the utility maximization problem, but we're going to do it using a Lagrangian, which is a calculus tool. So what we're gonna to do today, we are gonna review the results of the utility maximization problem from the video where we did not use the Lagrangian. Then we'll briefly introduce the idea of the Lagrangian and we'll use that same setup from the past utility maximization problem, but solve it with the Lagrangian, and we'll show that we get the exact same results. Again, timestamps below in the description if you wanna jump around. Otherwise, let's just quickly review the utility maximization problem that we did last time. So we had this utility function with x1 square root, x2 square root. We've got two goods, our budget constraint was three X one plus five X two was equal to 20. We set up the MRS to so the margin rate of substitution equal to the ratio of the prices. And we plug that into the budget constraint to get that X two was two units and that X one was 10 over three units. And that was our best bundle. That was a bundle that solved the utility maximization problem. And now we're gonna go ahead and do that with a Lagrangian. How are we gonna do this with a Lagrangian? Well, first let's talk about a Lagrangian. So Lagrangian is just a fancy way to do constrained optimization. What do I mean by constrained optimization? Well, I want to maximize my utility. And really the only way to maximize my utility is to have an infinite number of everything, which isn't practical, that's not possible. I'm constrained in what I can buy from the grocery store. So I am constrained by that budget constraint. It's a constrained optimization problem. I'm trying to maximize my utility subject to a budget constraint. So again, let's just make this a little more mathy. So we're trying to maximize a function subject to a constraint. I'll call that constraint G of X. And again, remember if we're thinking about the utility maximization problem, this f of x is our utility function. It's what we're trying to maximize subject to our budget constraint, which is a function of prices and x1 and x2. Now, when we're maximizing, we have to say what we're maximizing over. So we are maximizing over some choice variable, the things that we're choosing. And again, in that utility maximization problem, those things that we are choosing are the amounts of x1 and x2, the amounts of those two goods to buy. So we can put this into a Lagrangian. The way we're going to do this is we're gonna say, this is the max, again, of whatever we're maximizing, of f of x plus this lambda times our constraint, where this lambda will tell us whether or not our constraint binds. We're gonna get into this more in a separate video for right now, because we're dealing with utility maximization. This means whether or not we spend all our money at the grocery store. And when we're doing these utility maximization problems, we do. So we are going to say that this is always not binding in UMP for now because we spend all our money. Again, there's going to be a separate video that deals with this lambda in more detail, but for now, all we need to know is that this lambda is not going to be equal to zero, but this guy will equal zero, so we are going to be fine, meaning that this whole thing together has to be equal to zero. Now, let's go ahead and set this up with this utility maximization problem in mind. So we're going to use our utility function. That's the thing we're trying to maximize subject to our budget constraint. And we're gonna show that we're gonna to get to the same answer we did before. So let's go ahead and get going on that. So we are maximizing. What are we maximizing over? What are we choosing? We are choosing the amount of X1 we want to buy and the amount of X2 we wanna buy. We are maximizing our utility function, which is X1 to the one half, X2 to the one half. We've got this lambda, what are we constrained by? Well, we're constrained by this budget constraint. And the way I'm gonna write this budget constraint is I'm gonna say 20 is the amount of money we have and I can spend it on X1 and X2. Let's just make sure I got those right, the three and the five I did. So this is our Lagrangian. The way we are going to solve the Lagrangian 
is we are going to take the derivative of this thing with respect to both x1 and x2. Those are going to be called our first order conditions, our FOCs. I'm not going to go into why our FOCs are both necessary and sufficient to solve this problem, but we are going to use those first order conditions because they are, in fact, necessary and sufficient. And using those, we're going to get to that same answer that we did last time. So let's go ahead and start on some derivatives. Maybe I'll put these in blue. So let's take our first order condition with respect to x1, which is just the partial derivative of this Lagrangian with respect to x1. And that is going to be equal to, well, this is going to be x2 to the 1 half times 1 over 2x1 to the 1 half. Now, notice that there is also this x1 inside our constraint with this multiplier. So we need to add in minus 3 lambda, and that's equal to 0. Similarly, we can do the first order condition for x2, which is just the partial derivative of this Lagrangian with respect to x2, going to be very similar. We're going to have x1 to the 1 half times 1 over 2 x2 to the 1 half. Again, we've got an x2 inside here. So we need to take the derivative of this as well with respect to x2, and that's just going to be minus 5 lambda, and again, equals to 0. So now we've got our first order conditions. You're like, well, this looks kind of strange. I'm not really sure what I can do with this. But we can go ahead and divide these equations by each other, and that's going to produce something that's more useful. So first, Let's do this. This is a minus 3 lambda equals 0. So I can just say this is equal to 3 lambda, and this is equal to 5 lambda, and not really worry about this equals 0 business. So if I do this, what I'm going to have is I'm going to have x2 to the 1 half over x1 to the 1 half times, and then 1 over 2x1 to the 1 half over 1 over 2x2 to the 1 half equals 3 fifths. Let's play with this a little bit. Well, we can go ahead and switch this around. Just doing some algebra, we can have x2 to the 1 half over 2x1 to the 1 half over x1 to the 1 half divided by 2x2 to the 1 half equals 3 fifths. We're just going to switch this and multiply. So we have x2 to the 1 half over 2x1 to the 1 half times 2x2 to the 1 half over x1 to the 1 half is equal to 3 fifths. Beautiful, just like before, these are going to sum to 1. So we're just going to have x2 over x1. So x2 over x1 equals 3 fifths. Once again, we're just going to put that into our budget constraint because note that this means that 3x1 equals 5x2. And we have 3x1 plus 5x2 equals 220 from our budget constraint. So we can, again, do that same substitution. So maybe I'll put this 5x2 in for the 3x1 first. So I'm going to have 5x2 plus 5x2 equals 20, which means that 10x2 is 20, which means that x2 is going to be equal to 2, which means put a box around that first. This means that I have 3x1 plus 10 equals 20. So x1 equals 10 over 3. Again, I'm getting, I got that same answer that we did last time when we did this the non-Lagrangian way, just by the ratio of the marginal utilities is equal to the ratio of the prices. That is the point. You can do it both ways. This is the calculus way to do it. This is the formal Lagrangian way to do it. If this made more sense, make sure to like and subscribe, and we'll see you next time for another case of Econ Struggles.